Good afternoon, Eric Arnold here in the sports barn, sometimes known as the Big E. It's the first Saturday in September, um, and they're running the Kentucky Derby today. I guess the new normal is you're eventually going to get used to things just being thrown up in the air and totally not the way they're supposed to be. I guess that's it. You, when you get used to it, then that's the new normal. So I ain't used to it, so I hate the new normal. But they are running the Kentucky Derby today. Uh, we've got MLB picks for you. We've got one college football pick for you that we want to get up here quick before the damn thing kicks off and it's too late. Uh, so let's get right to it. Let's get right to it. Uh, last night, our winning streak was snapped. It wasn't a disaster of a night, but it was a losing night. Um, our top pick hit again, again. Uh, so we're hitting those. Let's see, where are we? Uh, Friday, here we are. Um, I'm not sure what we're, we're, what we're thinking there. We, we took a flyer with the Nationals. That's just a dead team. Uh, they lost. Um, top pick, Milwaukee, coming through easy. Um, I've been waiting all year for Milwaukee to play better, and I guess they did it last night, and they picked the right time when we had our top rating on it. Good for them, good for us. Uh, White Sox continue to play well. Uh, they get the W. Uh, you Darvish, my new bestie, my new best friend. This guy, I'm, I mean, like I said, I'm hardwired to hate this guy, to think he stinks. And he's just being a hero this year. And I'm finally coming around to that way of thinking, and I said, okay, I'll play this guy, and damn if he didn't do the job. So, you Darvish, get it done. And then the night went to shit. Um, the late night games, Houston losing an extra is a game they could easily won. Bale, Oakland didn't show up at all, big loss there. And then this, we should have had this game, damn it. I, 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 some kid, you know, we're losing six to five, bottom of the eighth. Uh, we get a broken bat single. Now we get another broken bat single. Now the, 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 the little crummy Diamondback pitcher hits a guy. Now the bases are loaded with nobody out. Nobody out. We're down and run in the bottom of the eighth. Nobody out. The bases are loaded. At a minimum, we're going to tie the game. Likely, we're going to take the lead and get paid. So I'm rubbing my hands together in glee. I'm waiting for the W. I'm waiting for, this will put us over the top five consecutive winning nights in the barn. I'm making my, you know, acceptance speech up in my head. Guy hits a short fly ball to right field. Not near enough to get this guy home. He catches it. This guy, you know, pretends like he's gonna run just to draw a throw. He throws it, hits the cutoff man. You know, he goes back. This guy just has no baseball instincts at all. He, I mean, he's on some other planet. He's on a planet. This guy's going to go try to be a hero and score. So I'm going to run right behind him and get the third. So he comes flying down behind him. And, you know, as soon as, you know, in the major leagues, they do use things like cutoff men, and they actually hit them occasionally, usually. So he's way over here when the cutoff man hits catches the ball. This guy is now blocking his path to third, and he goes, oh, shit. You know, you could actually see him say the words. Oh, shit. He turns around, goes back to second, easy out. Boop. Now they're two outs. Inning's just about over. Next guy makes it out. Inning over. Game over. Dick. I mean, I, I don't even know the guy's name because he's unimportant. He's so bad, he's unimportant. But he screwed us, so boo for that guy. Uh, anyway, that closed our losing night, and that's how you have that. So, where are we at now? Kentucky Derby at 7 o'clock tonight. No fans. Uh, I just haven't had time to handicap it. I mean, tis the law. That is your overwhelming favorite. Uh, easily won the Belmont. I believe he easily won the Travers at Saratoga. Um, I think you got to try to take a flyer and try to beat him somehow. You know, just because the price is going to be so short, you're not getting any value there. I think the value is on trying to find somebody that's going to up and beat him. Because, uh, you know, these horses, uh, just because he was 
great two months ago doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be great today. Um, you know, Secretariat lost races. You know, <laughs> Secretariat lost, I think, what, six weeks before the Derby? He, he had some kind of a mouth abscess or something that was bothering him, and he lost the Wood Memorial to horses. He, you know, he could run backwards and beat if he's right, but he wasn't right. So I guess that's what I'm thinking is I'm going to try to find somebody to beat Tis the Law. I don't know who that's going to be. But, you know, that's my thinking. And that's all I got for you because I haven't, just haven't had time to do the research. So college football, let's talk that. Um, give you that because that's going to be kicking off here probably in about a half hour by the time I get this damn video up. I like Middle Tennessee here. And this is the only play we have today. The others just seem, you know, uh, the numbers are too high. I don't have a feel yet for who's good, who's not. Um, I think the, a lot of people are thinking SMU is going to blow out whoever they're playing. I don't know. I don't know. I, they're playing Texas State, I think. I don't know. I mean, it, it, I think people are maybe uh, saying SMU is maybe a little better than really what they are. You know, that's a lot of points uh, for a team that's, you know, when did SMU get so good? You know? Uh, but at any rate, um, Middle Tennessee stayed up at West Point. Uh, we'll take the three and a half. We'll take the hook. Um, Army had a really great team there a couple of years ago. And now I think they're starting to revert back to, you know, traditional Army. Uh, Middle Tennessee, this is one of these pretty solid Conference USA teams. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got that right. The, 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 uh, the, yeah, I think that's right. Well, anyway, um, it, 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 I think the trick is if you got time to play to prepare for Army, you got a lot better chance to beat them uh, because they run that unique uh, triple option attack and it's tough to stop on a short week if you haven't had the time to. So in the opener, I'm going to say that Middle Tennessee has had some time to work on this option. And they're going to play Army tougher maybe than they would in the middle of the season. Um, so we like the we like getting the short price here. We're going to take the points. We like that half point. We like that a lot. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put one star on that for Middle Tennessee. So, there, that's your college football play for today. Uh, let's see what else. Um, here, Saturday. Saturday, here's your baseball plays. This is a little messy here, but we're going to do it. Uh, two stars with the run line with the White Sox uh, over the Royals. They're, they're, the White Sox are just you know, hot right now. They're just hot. You got their best pitcher going. Um, that one feels pretty good. I, I don't know. Maybe I think the Royals are just a little better than some of these other dead teams. Maybe that's why there's not three stars on this. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of, we like the White Sox. We'll take the run line and shorten up our risk a little bit. Uh, this I don't like at all, but uh, we're letting the model do what it wants. Uh, minus 235, I think that's a way too much of a, uh, it's way too expensive here. We've been toasted by the Twins a number of times this year. Uh, so we only got one star on that. Um, yeah, we're going to play the, play the whole thing, minus 235. So, you know, maybe they win by a run and we'll feel smart. So this is our top play, and I'm not sure why. <laughs> the, the, the Mets... Uh, the Phillies are red hot, and, you know, I, I, maybe the model just feels that this is a time for the Mets to come on. Uh, you know, Spencer Howard's pitching for the Phillies. Um, you know, it, it, I think Arietta went pretty deep last night into the game, shockingly enough. So maybe the thinking is that now the Phillies are going to go, you know, Howard will be short. You're going to get some real jabronis out there out of the Phillies' pen. Uh, the Mets are going to have some swings at some bad pitchers. 
Uh, Seth Lugo, he, you know, he's going to be short too. He's a, you know, he's a reliever. So uh, I did, did, I don't know. I didn't give the. I was in a rush this morning, so I didn't have a lot of time to think about this. But yeah, this was a top play. I know it. Uh, so there you go, Mets. Yay, yay, Mets. This, I think, you know, just coming right back with Milwaukee, you know, nothing's changed. Milwaukee still needs these wins, and Cleveland's quarter kind of doesn't really need them. Woodruff's probably Milwaukee's best pitcher. Uh, he's not going up against, uh, you know, unhittable guys like Bieber. Um, that McKenzie, he strikes me as damn near unhittable. Who's the other guy? Oh, Plesak, unhittable. He's going up against, I think, Savali. So... I think we, the, the Brewers have a chance here. Uh, I don't think that Hader pitched yesterday, so he's still available. They'll probably get him in there maybe. So he, I think you're going to have some real good pitching here tonight for Milwaukee, and maybe they win a 2-1 you know, squeaker or something. Uh, two stars here with Atlanta, and we're paying the huge price uh, against the dead Nationals. Uh, I think Atlanta used a lot of pitchers last night, so... The thinking being they're going to have to keep Freed out there and, uh, you know, we get a few extra innings to him, and that's good. So two stars there with the Braves, lay the huge number. I mean, this could be a bad night or a good night, but, you know, it could be a bad night if some of these huge favorites crap on us. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Uh, we'll take uh, the Yankees and Garrett Cole. He's, you know, the Yankees haven't been playing, playing well, and he hasn't been pitching well. So... They, they generally do well in Baltimore, and we're going to go ahead and say the Yankees right the ship tonight, and Garrett Cole goes down there and takes care of business against the Orioles. They need this game. Uh, you can't give away these kind of games. In the, uh, there's only so many games left. If you want to have any chance of catching the Rays, or at least cementing your spot in the top, echelon of those playoff teams so you get the home you know games in that three game series uh, yeah you better get start getting getting busy here Yankees so we think they will tonight and they're going to get this game we think two stars and then we'll take two stars here with the uh, Mariners uh, that team's starting to play better I mean they're really starting to play better they got a you know a dead team in front of them the Rangers uh, the Mariners have shown a hell of a lot more life in this uh, bubble season than the Rangers have. So we'll go ahead and we'll take the Mariners for two stars. So you got your Middle Tennessee over Army, and then we got the White Sox, Twins, Mets top play, Brewers top play, Atlanta Yankees, and the Mariners. So now to the real business. Game 7. Flyers, Islanders. Now, as you can see, I haven't worn this in probably 30 years, which uh, tells you a couple things. You know, one, I don't throw shit away. And two, um, I was about 180 pounds. Well, that's a, I exaggerate. At least 100 pounds lighter at one point in my life. And this actually fit. Uh, but this is the only damn thing I own that says Flyers on it. So I broke it out for the video here today. Now, I've been giving this some thought. You know, I've been giving this some thought. We're the home team tonight, damn it, in this bubble. You know, even though we've been getting our ass kicked up and down the ice and somehow have miraculously got this to a game seven. But we're the home team. And all that seems to get us is the last line change and we get our little advertisements on the boards. You know, I've noticed that. They change the ads on the boards in the in the whatever center it is, Scotia Bank or whatever the hell center it is up in Toronto, they change the ads for the home team. But we are the home team. So what the Flyers historically do when they need a game seven at home in the playoffs, they break out God bless America. By Kate Smith. Now, Kate Smith, of course, has been excommunicated by the Flyers organization because I think at one point in time she said something bad in 1920. Who knows what? Well, that's, that's, that shit just doesn't fly here in the barn. Kate Smith is our gal here in the barn. 
So we are breaking out. God bless America. From 1974, it's the spectrum. Thank <laughs> you.